Hey guys, and welcome to another I Make Jams tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, velocity modulation on your drum beats. Now, as you saw in the blog post, um, velocity modulation can really bring your drums to life. Um, we're going to show you how to do that. So first off, um, I want you to load up a drum rack. You can see here that I have a kit that I made in the DSi Tempest. Um, you can use any sounds you want. If you'd like to use this kit specifically, it's going to be available for download um, via splice.com's blog probably in the next week or so. So you can follow our uh, Facebook or Twitter for updates on that. Anyways, so to get started, we're going to start with the kick drum here. Now, this normally works well with a velocity sensitive, sensitive MIDI controller, but if you don't have one of those, you can basically pretend like you're playing a beat at different velocities by heading over to a clip and just uh, drawing in your beat, as you can see that I've done here. Um, there we go. So you can draw in your beat and then use these little these little uh, balloon shaped things these lines to um, set your velocity amount so so right up top is really high velocity as if you've hit the pad or key really hard and really quiet is or or really um, soft is at the bottom I'm just gonna set that back to the setting I had so basically what we're going to do is set a few parameters in the drum rack here what and play through this uh this clip and because all of these are different velocities you'll hear what the actual shades um you'll hear how the shades are changing with the velocity setting so let's start by listening to this that's the kick we've got right now um if you are using drum rack hope, hopefully you are um, each cell has a simpler in it and so if you look over here below volume LFO there's VEL standing for velocity and by default it's set to 35 percent so that's the amount of control that the velocity has over the volume what we're gonna do is start by turning that up to 70 percent let's say and now we have a bit more velocity control um, this is pretty much the simplest thing you can do to start, but, um, we're going to go more in depth than that. So let's hear our drum beat right now. Not too bad, but I'm just going to tighten up this drum, this kick drum as well. So I'm going to start by throwing a pitch envelope on it. Turn it on over here. I'm going to set the attack to zero. Turn the decay down to, I don't know, let's try 224. Um, the sustain can, maybe let's turn it up to 100% and then release to 60 seconds. Um, now I'm going to head down here to the pitch envelope amount and I'm going to crank this up two octaves which is 24 steps all right so let's have a listen now not too bad um, I kind of like the sustain at minus 100% so next what we're going to do is turn the filter on and we're just going to set it to uh, low pass 12 and down we're going to set it pretty low maybe 507 something like that and we're going to leave the resonance at the automatic uh, 0.7 and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn up VEL right here so this modulates this has the velocity modulating the filter cutoff point so the frequency so let's set it to 
um, let's set it pretty high. Let's just try 100% right to start. And so now um, harder velocities or higher velocity amounts are going to open up the filter a little bit. Let's have a listen. I like it around there. I'm just going to turn up the sample volume by two decibels to uh, minus 10. All right, so next we're going to work on uh, this open hi hat. It sounds pretty good, but on its own, um, it could be pretty dry and abrasive after a while. So with the hi hat, we're going to do something a little bit more complex. We're going to start by right clicking the sample and head down to simpler to sampler, this little arrow here. This basically turns the simpler in your cell into a sampler and then you can do a whole different world of things to it. Um, any cell can has this capability and this is one of the reasons drum rack is such a powerful tool. So what we're going to do is head into the um, da, 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 filter slash global section of the sampler. And we're just going to set our ADSR amounts to something a little different. Let's start with an attack of zero. Uh, we're going to take down the sustain to zero as well. Um, and then let's shorten the decay. too bad so there's with a the long decay let's tighten it up to right about there so um, in this case we'll leave the volume to velocity amount close to the same maybe let's turn it up to 38 or so so velocity controls the volume a little bit more than it normally would but not much um, now what we're going to do is head down to this little parameter here um, oh sorry not the time velocity the or not the key velocity the time velocity um, and we're gonna bring that into the negatives to around minus 30 something let's try 30 eight or something for now. Um, so what this is going to do is lengthen the envelopes when the velocity is higher and shorten them if it's lower. So so the standard, I'm, I'm pressing a note on my keyboard, the standard input velocity is 100 out of 127. So it sounds nice and open. But I have a hat pattern here um, that has multiple different velocities. You can see it right here. Now I'm going to play that and you'll hear what our setting sounds like. You kind of get an open and closed hi-hat vibe. A little bit like a real drummer. So. I have a clip here beneath that's both of the uh, both of the patterns together. I'm just going to turn it on and you can have a listen. And with the metronome on, you can really hear uh, the groove a lot clearer. All right, so we got one more thing um, in our kit here. 
I have this sound that I've named pop. It's kind of like a crunchy delayed sound, or I guess it has a bit of a slapback delay. Where are we here? There we go. So with this sound, um, we're just going to do something similar that we did to the kick. We're just going to, da, 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 we'll leave the velocity am amount probably at about 35%. And then um, we'll head to the filter, turn it on, go with low pass 12 again, and we're gonna take it down to the 900s maybe. 903 is pretty good. And once again, we're going to leave the resonance at 0.7. And um, then we will turn up the velocity amount. Let's try 100% to start. Um, so now what we're going to do, head over to the envelope section, turn on your filter envelope like so. And we're going to set the attack to 84, maybe a bit, maybe a bit less than that. 80, yeah, 84 will work. Um, decay will take down to. minute and 40 or I mean a second 1.4 seconds uh, sustain to zero release all the way up to 60 seconds and then we'll pop down here and turn up the envelope amount this just means that the filter envelope opens the frequency um, to an amount of six out of uh, 72 so let's have a listen to oops our pop sound all right so this is at a hundred uh velocity um i'm gonna add this sound into our previous beat oh, we have a pattern right here so it's just straight 16th notes let's hear it but as you can see by the different shades of midi note the darker ones um, are higher velocity. The lighter ones are a lighter velocity. Uh, you can see them. They just kind of creep up here. Let's have a listen. So just before we sign off here, um, I'm going to show you the same beat with no velocity modulation. All the settings are the same, but as you can see right here, everything is the same velocity. The same clip with velocity adjusted. So this is no velocity modulation. So as you can hear, the groove is a lot stronger in these clips that have a nice varying velocity. So you put this to work in whatever uh, sequencer or synth, um, whatever device you use. Um, Ableton's a great, uh, a great thing to use for it, and I use it all the time. Um, have fun, guys, and uh, thanks for watching.